good day ladies and gentlemen last week we discussed uh, the application of calculus in uh, economics and we talk about how we can use uh, calculus to investigate uh, a specific production function like the you know the Cobb-Douglas function we also talked about the various uh, optimizing behavior of a firm and how we can use the bordered Hessian and the Hessian determinant we earlier discussed to solve problems of a neoclassical firm. Now today we are going to also have an application of a, a differential calculus uh, to the consumer. So here we're talking about consumer utility maximization and once a consumer has maximized his utility there are certain issues that arise and that is a partial elasticity. That is the responsiveness of, you know, this uh, 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 demand to certain parameters in the, in the demand equation. I'm Daniel Kabnachri for, and uh, your, your tutor for this uh, course. So this is a session that we have and uh, what I intend discussing with the consumer utility maximization, partial elasticities, and here I'll look at three things, own elasticity, cross elasticity, income elasticity, and then there are implications in economics. Now, uh, every individual tends to derive satisfaction of whatever he or she consumes, right? And uh, this satisfaction or utility is derived from whatever we do. Now, assuming we consume only two sort of uh, goods, okay, Q1, Q2, there is a utility that we obtain from consuming these, uh, these uh, uh, two goods, okay? Uh, we will assume that these goods are positive, okay? They are uh, 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 quantities that the individual consumes and they are all individual consume and they are all sort of positive. There should be some mathematical formula that links, you know, this uh, Q1, Q2 that determines the utility or satisfaction of uh, this, uh, you know, individual. Now, uh, it's quite important to uh, know that this utility function is continuous and also ordinal in nature. The ordinal in nature is that it increases, but how, by how much it increases, we don't know. We are able to make a choice that if we have a consumption set here and a consumption set here, we are able to know that this one gives us more satisfaction than the other consumption set. But by how much right satisfaction it gives we are not able to know that and that explains the ordinary nature of our utility function now as human beings we are all constrained right we are all constrained by the amount of income that we have and in my analysis here i assume that we are consuming only two goods q1 q2 and the prices are p1 and p2 so we have a budget constraint of this nature so if we are consuming all these uh, two only these two commodities then the question we are solving is that we are trying to maximize our utility subject to our budget constraints, okay? Which mathematically we can write it in this form. And notice that this is something we've met, right? We've met uh, the solution to this uh, equation uh, or this problem and it's uh, on, uh, what do you call it, constraint optimization, which we discuss uh, in the case of the firm. So we look at how that applies to the consumer. Now, to do this, as you know, we form our Lagrangian, okay? This is an objective function, this is our constraint function. And then we take the first order uh, uh, derivative, we have this equation. And uh, what happens is that we can more or less manipulate the first equations, right? From these equations, we can have this relationship. We can also have this relationship that tells us that our lambda is always a constant. All right, so it means that the majority uh, divided by the price must be the same for all the commodities and must be equal to the lambda. This sort of uh, uh, equations were obtained from the first two over here, right? And that is the implications that we have. Now, uh, we know that in this situation, lambda is what? The marginal utility of income, which means that if income what increases by a small margin, utility will increase by that small margin. We can also have this relationship. What we have here over here is the material utility with respect to the first commodity. So the ratio of the, what it means that the ratio of the marginal utilities is equal to what? The price ratios. 
And these conditions, we also use them very well to be able to do analysis in utility function. Now, once we have these functions, right? Once we have these functions, notice that we can always solve it. We have these uh, equations. We can always solve for Q1 and Q2, right? Q1 and Q2. And Q1 and Q2 will be in terms of P1, P2, and then the income. So if we assume that this is the solution, so Q1 will depend on, will depend on P1, P2, and income. Q2 will also depend on P1, P2, and income. Also, lambda will also be in terms of the same variable. And uh, this gives us what? The demand. Okay? This is the demand that will maximize our utility if we have the problem at hand to solve. Notice that once it is a constraint optimization, we have to form our bordered Hessian determinant. And once we are dealing with two variables, even we have a three by three matrix, but then we have two here and our bar here to signify that we are dealing with a bordered Hessian determinant. And when we evaluate the determinants, as you see over here, we have this equation and it's going to be greater than zero since we are dealing with a maximum. Further, we can plot these uh, demand into the equations and then we have our maximum satisfaction based on our maximum demand. Again, we have looked at a situation where we have two commodities, okay, but we can have a number of commodities, Q number of commodities. In that case, we have this sort of objective function, utility function, which we are maximizing subject to this constraint, maximizing in terms of P1, Pn, and then lambda, and we can comfortably find our first order differential and solve for our, you know, maximum value. Let's look at a, a specific example. In this example, there's our utility function, a nice function. There's our constraint, and we are supposed to find the quantity demanded, okay? We are supposed to construct the demand function for that consumer, and then we have been given specific values, right? Uh, and uh, the value here is x, I think, right? This one should be y, and the income is 68 here. We need to know which one is uh, P1 and P2 here, and which one P1 is I. Right, I think there's a small, you know, over here. One of these should be P1, the other one should be P2, and there's the income. So if we look at our, we form our Lagrangian, the first order, we manipulate this equation, and then what do we get? We get this one to be our demand, okay? Expressed in terms of P1, P2, and I. In the case of Y, our demand expressed in terms of, you know, P1, P2, and I. So what happens is that our Lagrangian 2 is here. And then uh, what happens is that we have been given our P, right, uh, X here to be 2. And then we have our income. And then we have our P, Y here to be 4. So this is the value that we're giving over there. So a matter of slotting these values into the Lagrangian here, and we get this. We also have to slot them over here, right? X and Y. And when we slot them, we get the, we will get, we, we, the solution has been provided over here. But then all we have, we have to do is that we slot the, these values into these equations, equations that we have here, X1 and X2, and then we get the actual quantity uh, demanded. So in a nutshell, we can use calculus to also, you know, maximize the, you know, utility of a, 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 a consumer uh, who is constrained by his uh, budget. Right. There's an activity here which I would like you to try your hands on and let's meet at the chat room if you have any problem. Now, once we have these, uh, I would like us to now discuss, you know, what we call partial elasticities. You may have discussed elasticities, right? But here, the emphasis on, is on partial 
uh, elasticities. When we maximize our utility function, notice that we got a demand Q1 depending on P1, P2, and I, and also demand for the second group depending on P1, P2, and I. Okay? Now, when we have these ones, we can have three different elasticities. We have own elasticity, cross elasticity, and then income elasticities. Okay? And each and every one of these elasticities points to or have got some implications for the relation between, you know, those commodities at hand. Now, let's take each of them and try to understand. The own elasticity of demand, which are demand by, uh, the, uh, denoted by D11 uh, here, of, you know, this input Q1 is defined as the proportionate rate of change in demand Q1 divided by the proportionate rate of change of its own price. Okay? So here, this is E11 giving us what we have over here. This is P1, this is Q1, this is the marginal sort of uh, the Q1 respect to what? 1. So when we evaluate this one, when it's numerically high, that it implies that the quantity demanded responds proportionately well to change in price. Okay? So the value here will determine how the quantity demand of that commodity responds to its own, you know, it re respond to its own, you know, price. And in many, in, uh, in many situations, if you have your own elasticity being equals to one, then we have demand to be what? Unitary elastic. If it's less than one, then it means we have inelastic. And then when it's greater than one, it means we have you know, elastic sort of what demand. And uh, in the case when it's elastic, we talk about the goods being a luxury because uh, the, uh, the consumer experience with the decrease, uh, consumer expenditure will decrease with increase in price. And in this case, we look at it as a necessity because the consumer's expenditure will increase with increase in price. So own elasticity of demand permits us to see whether a commodity is a necessity or a commodity is a, is a luxury. Let's look at cross elasticity. Here, we're talking about a proportionate change in price, you know, of one commodity and its impact or relative to a proportionate change in output of the other commodity. So here you see that this is the Q1, the Q2, and this P2 or Q1. So you're knowing how you know, quantity demand of Q1 changes when the, the price of the other commodity, you know, you know changes. Now, uh, cross elasticity of a demand permits us to know whether two goods are complementary or substitutes, right? For substitute goods such as, uh, you know, butter and margarine, there's the classical example, the cross elasticity will be what? Positive. On the other way around, whether, when it is uh, negative, then, you know, we're talking about what? Complementary set of goods. When the cross elasticity is negative, then we're talking about the two goods being complementary. Now, when you look at these uh, two goods, when you have the cross elasticity being greater than zero, then you have substitutes here, and then uh, we have uh, complements here, and then when it's equal to zero, then it suggests that there is no sort of a, a, a relation between the two commodities. Now, the last thing, it's about income elasticity of demand. So here, we would like to see how demand of the commodity responds to a change in income of the commodity. And uh, the similar formula applies. And if we have the income elasticity to be equal to, to be greater than zero, then we talk about, you know, a normal good. And then when it's less than zero, we have inferior goods. So income elasticity permits us to uh, know whether a good is a, it's a normal good or a good, it's, a, it's an inferior good. I have some examples here. So we have a certain demand function. Our objective is to investigate, right, you know, the relation that good have with respect to the prices P1, P2, P3. And uh, we are supposed to calculate the cross elasticities and interpret the relation between 
you know, the goods. So if you look at the first one over here, you can take your time and go through the solutions here, right? The solutions here, the uh, derivatives are being made, the cross elasticities are being calculated in these situations, and uh, the price are being put in, and then you evaluate it, and uh, you are able to more or less uh, discuss the two goods. There is also an activity here, and uh, I would like you to take your time and go through these activities here. You are supposed to find the price elasticity of demand, the cross elasticity, and the income elasticity of demand, as we have already discussed. And uh, I think if you have any problems, we can meet you know, at a chat room. Another example here where a specific level uh, 300 students has got a demand function, depending on the prices, and the income, demand function, as we know, at our level depends always on price and income. And these are the questions that we are supposed to uh, discuss. Thank you very much.